Good afternoon, fellow citizens. Welcome to the Citizens Chat Show. My name is Masesa Demiano, and today, yes, we are going to discuss issues around terror and, of course, the extrajudicial killings that are happening around the country. We've seen this throughout the, uh, the, this whole week and, and the, before then. And, uh, of course, we want to put some more weight in an understanding why this is happening around the country. And, uh, of course, uh, to discuss this on, on the panel, I have uh, Honorable uh, Gerard Karuhanga is, uh, of course, from the far right, is, uh, of course, uh, uh, formerly the, the MP of Ntungamo. Uh, Gerard, you're welcome back. Thank you. Always a pleasure mm -hmm. to see you on Thank the show. You. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, followed by uh, Joseph Ocheno, the UPC ideologue, and also, of course, uh, president now. UPC uh, contender for mm -hmm. presidency. Oh, yeah. is that Pleasure so? to be here, and yeah. I, I hope I've declared at some stage president of the UPC, and we shall make sure that from Tungamo all the way to Kumi, we are here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Then, of course, uh, one of our usual suspects have a lot of convincing uh, is uh, to uh, do. retired Major Awich Pola, is, of course, uh, the Director of External Services with NRM. Uh, Awich, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. And it's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, then, uh, finally, is... Uh, you had gotten lost. We've mm. missed you for about two episodes. Yeah, well. Yes, well, yeah. uh, you'll come back again. Uh, yeah. Monica Moding, mm. uh, formerly the woman MP of Kumi, and uh, a, of course a gender activist. Uh, you're welcome. I don't quite see any representatives of UPC in Kumi, so I don't know how. Um... Well, Kumi, Kumi voted for me overwhelmingly at the last elections in December for party leadership. Mm. In the event that we resolve these national issues, uh, and, and I hope the, the responsible land judges, just says, do us fair and, 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 and reason in the next few weeks or months, and definitely Kumi will be the place to, to, to be. And definitely in Kumi, we shall actually route out NRM. Okay, we shall, <laughs> we shall have a, a day of uh, discussing yeah. uh, political party <laughs> engagements, <laughs> where, of course, uh, Karanga will also tell mm. us the independence of where he started and now with him. Yeah. So we, we are good to go. So in the conversation today, I think, uh, of course, we are going to discuss uh, the issues around... Uh, the extrajudicial killings, but of course we know and uh, we all know that uh, the right to life is uh, the most mm. fundamental human rights, and of course it's where the bedrock of all the other rights uh, start from. And uh, of course, with uh, all the international uh, acts that are there, uh, the, the 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 conventions that uh, that uh, protect uh, human rights all talk about uh, the right to life and the other human rights. So it's a discussion that we will have today, and of course because we we are going to discuss human rights and. Uh, Extrajudicial killing, and there is, there's already a person of, of uh, the government that is uh, almost threatened by, 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 by these uh, terror issues. I need to start with you, uh, Comrade Awich, and you, of course, you're not running away from uh, giving your mic to someone else. Today is you. I, I, we need to understand what kind of threat uh, does the government face uh, in fighting this terror, in fighting terrorism today? Or how severe is this? Uh, issue are we uh, should we be worried as uh, citizens well as a state it starts with the responsibility to protect lives and property but also if you go back a bit as a party as NRM we sold the manifesto which among it includes the fact that if you vote for us we shall protect your lives and property so whoever go, uh, takes lives and property, therefore, uh, outside the law, becomes a threat. Uh, the degree of the threat sometimes is given in security terms to say it is at this level or at that level. But generally to say that it is always determined by the assessed threats, of course, as we see it. Uh, but it's not measurable in terms like you're saying this is a de-threatogram or threatometer. But always we have degrees of threat and alertness that we give to the population. But uh, in the more consumable terms is that uh, when there are attacks, the, the rate at which the occurrence of the attacks come also determines the degree of threat. And the number of lives that it goes with also determines the degrees of the degree of threat. So in the last week, therefore, it was really a threat because you could see one bomb after another and claiming lives. And to government and to to the party, that one life matters. So about if it was two or three, 
So uh, that's why maybe going forward, I hope shall come back to it, is that uh, nobody is supposed to take life of another uh, outside the law. I, I like to clear that uh, under Article 44, there are only four things that you can't tamper with. That is a freedom from slavery. Nobody can ever make somebody a slave. Uh, right to have a scopus. Uh, fair hearing. And <coughs> what else, Ukaranga? Uh, fair hearing, right to have a scopus, uh, slavery, and fair hearing. There are four. Torture. Torture, yes, torture. torture is the fourth one. But right to life is not one of them. Or even right to food. In other words, a court of law can convict somebody and remove life. Unlike the other four where not even the court can do it. Therefore, uh, this brings in the elements of extrajudicial, meaning that judicially you can take life, <laughs> but not extrajudicially, because right to life is not among the four. Therefore, uh, the current status is that it did the threat, and which calls for all stakeholders to be alert, and of course, the state and the government is on the driving wheel. Uh, even if somebody dies, it's, I mean, more or less, the state is more liable than even the killer. Because you should have stopped the killer from killing the killer. You can blame the killer, right? The killer has done it. But that is why we have the state. That is why we signed that social contract with the people. That is why the people mandated you, the state, or mandated us, the state, to say, do this. So the threat is real, and we call on everybody to come on board. Oh, sh so should we say that uh, these are legitimate acts of war? If they're not uh, really extrajudicial? According to the... Legitimate to, state hmm. acts. Uh, by the attacker or by the state? By the state, because the way they, they are going for these people and without trial, they're killing them. So should we say really? Because then if you're not extrajudicial and you're saying that is legitimate, then should we say... The killing of these is maybe provocation in some I, I, I because have, that is that is possible. Yes, I have heard the president accepted. comment about that. But mm. I think what is here in place is that if you're in combat, and of course combat would not necessarily mean in a conventional warfare, mm. but if you are deployed and you definitely know there's an enemy here, there's a terrorist and there's action of fire. If you can't subdue him and he's killed. That is legitimate. But normally, it should be reasonable force. But reasonable force in the exchange of fire, because you, now, you can now see the reasonability. Mm -hmm. If you're exchanging fire, there's no... Reasonable force is easily determined when you're arresting uh, an armless person. Mm -hmm. So whoever gets caught up in the, 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 the exchange of <coughs> fire, of course, is legitimate target. But I know, and the state knows that, there's a provision under the Constitution, in the Constitution, that... All death must be actually confirmed by the Supreme Court. I don't know whether our colleagues are very aware. So death is not that easy. So it should really be judicial, not extrajudicial. But anybody who gets killed in an exchange of fire finds himself legitimate. But as a state, should, a, the, 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 you are expected the, the, the conduct or the terms of the operation are always clear. The instruction for the operation is clear. Mm. But if you get caught up in crossfire, of course, you become a legitimate target. Uh, I need to invite in uh, uh, Honorable Monica. <laughs> uh, you, you, your thoughts on this? <laughs> OK. Thank you so much, um, Damian, for inviting us here again. And uh, it was nice seeing uh, Comrade. I don't want to say Comrade. Well, that one is a debate for another day. Mm. So I, I think the word comrade is inappropriate. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm. senior colleague, mm. uh, in the sense that we interact a lot with him on mm. several spaces. Mm. And it is a pleasure seeing him, of course, putting across um, uh, these very important points. And I like uh, his arguments. He's, he's, he's not taking responsibility <laughs> for the actions of the state at this point, I think. He's just putting across what the law says in terms of uh, such circumstances. Should it be judicial or extrajudicial killing? First of all, we want to say that the state, of course, derives its power from the Constitution. 
everything that we have anticipated or will anticipate happening in Uganda in line with the rights of individuals, how the state should conduct itself in such uh, circumstances and challenges is already provided for in the constitution. And therefore it is anticipated that there would be such uh, scenarios and uh, it is expected that the state would abide with what the law provides for. And what does the law provide for? It provides for judicious mm -hmm. processes. And this, of course, you know that uh, uh, taking away the life of another should be done so under the law. And we have actually gone ahead in the discussions of whether death penalty should actually be happening in mm -hmm. this 21st mm -hmm. century. Mm -hmm. And so the death penalty discussion is another debate for, for another day. But what we seem to, of course, know is that we are moving towards uh, a position where we are, as a country, we are signatory to these international frameworks. Mm -hmm. And the general discussion globally is that death penalty is no longer something that any country that is democratic should be uh, championing. And that discussion is at high court, although it is still in our law books, mm -hmm. but hardly will you get a conviction for, for, for those uh, cruel uh, ways of punishment. And so my view, first of all, is that um, it is not proper the way the state is proceeding in terms of uh, uh, these killings. And when I was reflecting on it, I, I, I sort of thought maybe we are in a movie as a country. There is like mm. a, a, we are like in a theater where there is a script already written on certain things, the way they are happening. Because a few, three weeks or so, a month, not less than, not more than two months, we were here discussing issues of bail. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole debate was like, no, we should not, you know, the, the bail should be maintained because it's a cardinal rule and law, you know, principle in the law books. And uh, the president should not be advancing that cause. But the president was emphatic uh, about uh, denying bail to murderers and all that. Mm -hmm. Before we know, then the bombings happen. Not one. We first saw the one of Koma and Boga, then the second, the third. And uh, of course now, it looks like there is a justification for denying bail to certain offenders, <laughs> 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 terrorists and all that. But you see, the definition of terrorism is quite unclear even in the Anti-Terror Act. It is so far wide catching that I saw some things on the social media recently making rounds about some people who were accused for, for being terrorists because they incited a certain form of violence. Mm -hmm. Inciting violence and terrorism, I don't know if they can be equated in terms of uh, their gravity in occurrence, because I may incite violence, mm -hmm. but I have not killed. Mm -hmm. But a terrorist comes to kill, to destroy property and life, suicide per se. And so the way the state is proceeding is, first of all, outside the law. It is proceeding in a way that is not judicious because what we are seeing are state killings or security killings, but the state has not come to disassociate itself from it. Mm. It is actually okaying what the security forces are doing. And what we are seeing is uh, uh, um, some uh, Muslim clerics largely being shot down without actually do, following the due process of the law, which is investigation. You know, mm -hmm. investigate conclusively, have sufficient evidence, and produce these people before a competent court. That's what the law provides for and the constitution. And so if they are not produced before courts of law, and then the state goes ahead and shoots them, kills them, the state now has become God in terms of taking away life. And uh, because I imagine by the time they shot or they come to arrest them, they must have investigated and found that mm. there was something associated to these particular people. So if a state has the capacity to understand or to investigate, then they could have actually had the capacity to prevent the terror acts mm -hmm. because they knew the people. Now what we are seeing is that the, 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 the killings are happening after the terror acts. How come the state could not investigate those happenings and prevent the terror acts from happening by securing people's lives and property? So, first of all, it's so, so unfortunate, and it's very unfortunate to the families, the innocent lives that have been lost. And so we see a failure by the state to do its work.
conclusive investigation which could have prevented the terror attacks. Mm. But also, if they have happened, the, the conclusive investigation and arraignment of these suspected people before competent courts. We have enough courts in Uganda. A special court actually on such crimes mm. is there. And so we, we, we seem to be very uncomfortable. And so for me, my analysis of the situation seems to be pointing to, you know, I, I, I'm a bit doubtful. I don't know about other Ugandans, <clears throat> but I feel as if there is some movie that is being played out and there is a script somewhere. And therefore, for me, I'm trying to investigate further. And I think other Ugandans not, don't need to just be gullible mm. to perceive things as they are. Finally, mm. the issue of security, uh, uh, um, monopolizing this discussion mm -hmm. of security. Mm -hmm. You know, they're the ones who say we, 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 we control the intelligence of the country and all that. But people have another narrative. Mm. And uh, security is not allowing that kind of narrative or discussion to be engaged on. It's a monopoly of the the state, the monopoly of the security systems apparatus in the country, and yet there could be other alternative thinkings to some of these things. So, in conclusion, I think <clears throat> the way the state is proceeding, we are actually more in danger as a country because the arrests, the, 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 the killings and the arrests seem to be targeting a certain section of society. Mm. And I fear in the future, the counter, you know, response from those sections of the public, the Muslim community seems to be, I think, really hard-pressed. I think, I think, Honorable, uh, 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 we'll, 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 we'll possibly get there, the but we're, we're getting there. Yeah. I want, let's, 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 before I you wish could answer this mm. so that she makes a point clear. I <clears> see you raise it and therefore the burden is on you. You seem to say that there is killing. My argument was that people who get killed are in the crossfire. Do you have any particular instances where you are saying that somebody was killed in cold blood rather than in cold crossfire? There are have those first facts? two cases we had. They actually, actually, these some of these cases they do not resist arrest. They actually, I think, the first cases. What were the names? Um, they were not resisting arrest of the other week. Yeah. They actually volunteered the information to security but were killed after Kirev, Kirevu and uh, somebody. They were the first two uh, shakers who were Because me, all I, and I so wanted it's was very that unfair a case-by-case case mm. situation, because the, the, the story from the, the those who were involved in the operation mm. is that they went for the operation. The report. They surround the house. In the process of surrounding the house... There's a crossfire. And, yes, and a fire ensued. And that's why I wanted to see if you have a contrary information. Well, the contrary because we need to. We, do, we don't know that we, we have uh, eyewitnesses in that case. Maybe possible they would be forced. But uh, I need to bring in uh, Honorable Gerard. Uh, mm -hmm. There are quite a lot of issues that have come out from uh, these uh, opening uh, remarks from uh, from both uh, Witch and and, uh, and uh, Monica. And uh, clearly, they, I would want to ask: Is there what really justifies or what really informs the 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 the, the, the current trend, the current trend of killings? But importantly is uh, now she raises the issue of bail, yeah? And uh, now that the bail discussion has been on, could this be now a justification that, okay, some of these killings can really <coughs> be, we can deny bails for some of these people, but also if now there's extrajudicial killing and you're not aligning people to court, is this an, a way of undermining the judicial system? Firstly, um, every human being is born with inherent rights. Mm. So we don't just exist. Mm. And some of these rights must not be codified. They don't have to be in any written law or, or anyone even to spell them out. They are rights we are born with as human beings. They are right to live. It's actually the beginning of everything. Because, I mean, if you are not, I mean, assuming we're all not alive, <coughs> then I don't know uh, whether everything we're talking about would even um, uh, make make so much sense to humanity because it would be in it wouldn't be in existence. Mm. So the 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 state, I think, in its very foundational. Uh, uh, 
prerequisite for even its, its existence as a government is to look out for the safety, for the well-being of the citizens of the country. That's the cardinal, the foundational uh, role of, of, of the government. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, we've seen these um, terror attacks. I don't want to believe they are terror attacks. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm very specific about using the words we want to believe. Mm -hmm. um, so, <coughs> what, assuming they are terror attacks, um, government has every responsibility, has every uh, uh, resource, has every uh, reason mm. to go in and clear or sort out whatever it is that has got to do with terrorism. Mm. However, government is... is, is that doesn't operate in space. Even in space now, we have uh, uh, we have people visiting space, and uh, there are satellites. They are also controlled. There are rules and regulations. So, the moment you begin a practice of killing people <coughs> as a way of uh, retaliation, or you say. Oh, so we, we, let's crush all these uh, terrorists. Firstly, they are suspects. Assuming uh, we are really mm. still assuming that, that these are terror attacks. So you suspect that so and so uh, uh, could have participated or could be one of those who were uh, involved in the terrorism. And before you really ascertain, what exactly happened, what was the role of this person, you clear them. So what do you do? One, you deny yourself the very opportunity to appreciate the depth of this terrorism. Mm -hmm. Who is involved, how deep is it, to what extent, where is the funding. Mm -hmm. So you, you really deny yourself all that. But two, you completely take away what makes us a country. You abrogate the constitution completely, mm. and so you begin operating like, like actually, say terrorist. Terrorist. State. Because then, because you, you you are not you are not operating in, in any in any legal framework that gives hope to the people, mm. that gives confidence to the to the people, so that they can be able to, for instance, share useful information. Uh, because then they know that there are processes that are decent mm -hmm. that would end up in, 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 in giving uh, the right results. Mm -hmm. So you completely take away that. Um, yes, like, uh, uh, like my sister Monica said, there's also a school of thought that, um, that maybe uh, we also need to understand is this entirely actually, is it actually really terrorism? Um, uh, and that also should be appreciated. But you know all this, the question is, mm. why terrorism now? Where is this coming from? How do we end up here? Mm. You see, and, and, and I'm very certain, those who are in the ruling party. And, and it's not happening. Class. Yes, yes the ruling class. <laughs> it's not happening elsewhere in the East African It's only in uh, Uganda. Countries. It's just around here. They appreciate so well mm. that God created humanity in such a way that the moment you deny them space, mm. space to choose their own leaders, space to enjoy their freedom, space to live, to live, mm. to thrive, and thrive and, and progress, okay. Then naturally you create you basically you you create you are literally basically every day working on manure. Mm. You, you are basically building a very interesting garden, a very very dangerous garden. Now, and, and these I want to believe are just uh, tips of the iceberg, mm. because you take away freedom, you take away. You see, the moment a human being doesn't see hope, 
But to live is, is, it doesn't make even sense. Then you, you've literally armed them to do anything. To do anything. Because then, th then you've, you've dwindled every little space that they could imagine. That maybe if I do this small thing, I could live a better life. Mm. So, so the, 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 the regime has, has a very, very critical point mm. in its existence. Mm. To go back and reflect and rethink and say, but wait a minute, mm. where is this headed? Are these just one-offs? And, and I don't think they're one-offs because we've, we've had these attacks before. So, so why, why is it that now, when everyone seems to, have, to be moving off from, from these uh, 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 terror issues, for us now, they are becoming more apparent. Mm. So, uh, in, in, uh, just to conclude this segment, um, sharing... You can when call Ndugu, him when, comrade. When, which, comrade. When, when he said, um, <laughs> when he Awichi. said in our manifesto, we had clearly, I thought he, had, he was going to say, in our manifesto, we had clearly indicated that uh, uh, we are going to leave power uh, peacefully this time around. It's the people uh, to uh, decide. Like, uh, <laughs> like, it, like it was in the, in the previous manifestos. Mm. Yeah, because they were in the previous, if you recall, uh, I think in one of the manifestos, President Museveni was very clear. He mentioned it four times in one manifesto mm -hmm. that he was not going to run again. Four times. Here we are. So what? Why should you think Ugandans should have even a little confidence that you even care about their lives? Mm. Interesting. He has mandate. Yes. <laughs> that is what <laughs> I was going to say. We need to, to, <laughs> we need to uh, <laughs> President Museveni over the time. One terror has been more of his something he thinks of every every term every term like you're saying four years four four terms and we, we are still in the in the same uh, situation but i want to invite in uh, joseph joseph you most times now the discussion would be uh if and uh, for for one to justify terrorism they would say uh, is to avoid possibly another attack that would happen and uh or maybe other means have all failed is there, are we seeing this that uh, really the, all the other means have been exhausted and now that is the best way we can go to, to end uh, terrorism or by, by, by judicially killing uh, suspects? But also importantly, because uh, Gerard tried to raise an issue and says, why now? Why today? Mm -hmm. And uh, because we saw it's right after elections, we saw massacre killings. Mm -hmm. Now we are seeing the bombings. Is there a section of people who are really disgruntled and are trying to send off a message? That is what the state should be giving us. <clears throat> and if um, Mr. Museveni was a guy who cared about this country, um, um, he would actually uh, immediately, these things happen, go to the country and, as I said, rally around the country and uh, give us assurances and give us some total of these things and include the massacre killings and say, country, fellow uh, citizens, country, women and men. Of course, you know, he rarely says fellow citizens, but that's a different issue. No, there is no circumstance really uh, under which a killing of any Ugandan is justified. I speak from a point of privilege that I represent the political party that has governed this country twice. And the political party that has governed this country twice directly with the mandate of the people. And my good brother, which was... Uh, Times my, my brother, which was talking <laughs> mandate, but uh, the people of Uganda know that nobody gave him a seven mandate to state house in 1986. And I think Gerald was being very, very, um, very, very diplomatic, very generous by hinting that actually having entered state house by force uh, and having manipulated himself and imposed himself and run, give a big, big of run. The sensible thing for Mr. Museveni and uh, my brother, which perhaps he might help him, would be to not wait to the extremes where people get so tired, so angry, so desperate that they're prepared to blow themselves up. That uh, after 36 years, it is actually fair enough you know, to say, even thank God, that thank God, I did not even get the people's mandate, but I've had it so long to basically just organize and let go. But no, Mr. Museveni is supposed to be unlikely to do that. But I would be surprised. I would wait for that surprise. It would be a very big present for the people of Uganda. 
It won't be any special present for me, but it will be a present for the people of Uganda. But back really to the authority that I hold for, as a uh, Uganda People's Congress, um, Monica, twice we led this government. How many years in total? Uh, 12, 12 and a half years. So eight years first time, 1962 to 71 January. 1980, December, January to 1985, July. Throughout that time, never, not even once, did President Milton Obote, the father of this country, never did he actually pick up a piece of paper that has come from a judge to condemn somebody to, for hanging, to die. That is what, so never, twice president, twice people were committed, for, uh, committed to, for, for, to, to, to hang, Obote refused and he said, and I remember him telling me again, and I tell you young Ugandans, Joe, I have no right to sign up somebody's, somebody's life. Now, that's how serious the father of this country takes it. That is how strongly we hold, and I do, that in the likely event that there's a UPC government tomorrow, death penalty would be, hey, off. Nobody should take the life of any other citizen. Now, when it comes to the question of, 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 of terrorism, I will not even talk about the kind of thing that uh, Semuju and uh, Lukwago were trying to remind your guys, who basically <laughs> practice terrorism, <laughs> you know? All this thing, there is really no reason why you go for a suspect, you fail to subdue a suspect, and you claim to be the greatest army in this world, I mean, on the continent, you fail to subdue a, a, a suspect, there is no evidence that your life is at threat, you know? There's no evidence that the suspect, in this case, Lukwago putting that guy there, you know, Jimmy, or, you know, the former Minister of Health, Jimmy oh, Hoes. Jim Hoes. Oh, yeah, you know, I remember him over Gavi, you know, Gavi fans, you know? So um, th th there's no evidence that um, uh, the suspects really wanted to run or they threat. You basically neutralize him. That's why I, Gerard was saying, in a different way. I, can't, I don't understand it. You don't need security studies. You are perhaps, you're the soldier here, you know? To kill a suspect, especially as Monica was saying, you know, you have failed up to the time of the terror attack, you know? Failed in intelligence. The best intelligence for you is this individual you, you're killing. So it's absolute common sense that you get hold of this person, you know, possibly break their leg, worst case scenario, and use them to provide you with more information. intelligence. Mm -hmm. More information, more intelligence. The guys who attempted the life of President Obote in 1969, they were just released. The guys whom some dubious guys sent him to, to, to drive Dr. Obote's life in West Nile in 1965, they were part of the convoy up to Kampala. So this has happened in this country before, under the democratic government. I'm saying this deliberately. Because there is this propaganda, especially NRA propaganda, that they came to bring peace and hope. And supposedly even the more reason why, having done all the atrocities in Luweru, having committed yourselves on the people of Uganda, I think 36 years later, really this country and citizens of this country, and indeed, having had the massacres of last year leading to elections, the massacres post-elections, and then the terror attack, the last thing this country needed was that in attempting to subdue uh, 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 suspects, you know, you end a life of one. I'll tell you a quick observation. In about 1983, 84, you will have heard this. Museveni's guys, you know, um, very, very, very well known, Magara, Sam Magara, you know, a guy whom Mbote helped to study law in, in Dar es Salaam in the 70s, came home here and somehow joined the Museveni's and Kagame's on the atrocious war way. So Magara comes to Kampala. This is very important. Magara, Magara comes to Kampala. And they're surrounded in some house, I think, a tender pool is somewhere, somewhere in, 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 in old Kampala. And there was an exchange of fire. I understand there's an instruction. <laughs> really, really, this guy is not to be killed. Source information. But on the other hand, I had a soft spot, apparently, for Magara. This official, I know some of his family members, might be watching. You know, these guys refused to, 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 to surrender. And they're killed in crossfire. That is such an emotive thing to the family members who have had some conversation with people. So these are guys who came as terrorists.
from the bush. They come into Kamala, get surrounded, they, they refuse to, <laughs> to, to surrender, but somehow they want to be alive, but they're shooting at the security services. Now, now those are NRA guys. These are direct extremes of these things, which if you didn't really know these things, please take it back. Because the point is, I think this country, we've had enough of wasting our people's lives for nothing. So something that I feel very strongly about. Mm -hmm. There's really, really no re reason why extrajudicial killings should take place. But I know your commanding chief, Mr. Museveni, told, I think, a BBC or Channel 4 reporter, correct me, that he had never heard about the Geneva Convention on wars. Now, that's your commanding chief. So, you know, just some food for thought for you. So Museveni picks and chooses when it's appropriate. These guys have got an agenda, and their job is to pursue and to pursue and to pursue. But for heaven's sake, pursue and leave heaven's people, meaning Jesus' people, and ours, of course. Leave our, at least save our lives and pursue some of these other things. Mm. You're really taking to the extreme. So that's a quick point here in, in terms of observation. Yes. Um, why? The why is exactly that. That the reason people opt for many of these things are when there are no options. Now, the, 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 the killing of that particular ind individual, the one especially, the one that uh, 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 Lukwago was referring to, mm. you know, is exactly the thing that inspires some other Ugandan citizens, observes an, inj an, an injustice, and considers an action to sort of respond. But that said, I'm saying this official as UPC, we should really seek for political settlement, mm -hmm. political resolutions of conflicts in this country, and that there should really be no grounds under which people should opt for, uh, 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 for an alternative means, however much they are provoked by the state. And in the state's case, it's your job to protect our lives and properties. So please, Let's seize this. Okay, uh, that, that is. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Joseph. But uh, now that I want to bring in uh, uh, Dugawich, I also before you you possibly respond to what mm. Joseph is saying, I, I need to both maybe you would want to inform the, the public, are there circumstances under which the security possibly is allowed to to really take down the life of a suspect, or, or so in that yeah, nature? Yeah, that's what I wanted to <clears throat> to say right from what Honorable General was saying. Yeah. I want to make it clear that. In a professional army conduct, which it does exist now, is that there's what is called terms of engagement. There are clear instructions given whenever there's any slightest operation. If you are in a Somali, for example, the terms of engagement is different. If you are uh, going to arrest a terrorist, the terms of engagement are clear. Now, these terms of engagement depends on the threat that you would enter in space. And that's why I'm saying the terms of engagement given to a section or a platoon or a company going to pick a terrorist, for sure says bring him here. But uh, when there's engagement with exchange of fire, mm -hmm. do the necessary. So the terms of conditions are always specific. And the terms of conditions, I mean the terms of engagement here, clearly respects rights. For example, an injured person or a war prisoner or something, anything of that kind, it is legitimate. So, I like to say that terms of, in terms of engagement, this army is very aware. This is a professional army, it has done training. When you say legitimate, now, <laughs> where, said, where does the law come from? Where, where is it written that that is a legitimate? Because that what? If you say that is where the terms of engagement are really, really... Uh, you see, the terms of engagement, are, are and, are, are the terms of engagement yes. itself is law, if you mm. may understand. Yes. Because the constitution is the supreme. Mm. The constitution gives birth to other laws, which give birth to the army. Yes. And it gives birth to the army, and there are some regulations that govern the army. Mm. So there's a whole chain of things from the constitution downwards. So giving birth to the terms of engagement. So terms of engagement is not an illegal order. Mm. It is a lawful order. A lawful order comes from an act passed by parliament, an act which comes from the, 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 the parliament, I mean, the from the constitution. Mm. So that's why I'm saying the terms of engagement is lawful. Mm. And therefore, uh, whatever happens is in line with the terms of engagement. That is always given in each and every op specific operation. Mm. The other thing I want to address is the issue of why now? Mm -hmm. You see, we have 40 million plus people. And to determine uh, who... <laughs> <laughs> who <laughs> yes, uh, are you laughing at the, the figures? If you may correct me. Mm -hmm. But the point I'm trying to say here is that not all of us can agree that Mr. X 
is legitimate. Is, that's the majority. Mm. So there's no measurement. The only measurement is to go to the ballot. Mm. And we have gone to the ballot. Mm. It also goes ahead to provide provisions for challenging if you're not happy with it. Mm. Therefore, with all these people and the political class alone, <coughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry. <coughs> Need some you can't say, even among the political class alone, they will, everybody will accept that have lost. Mm. So this partly explains why now. It explains now. Because we're not going to, to get a whole cla political class agree that have lost. Mm. Somebody will say, no, I've not lost genuinely. So this explains why now. Mm. To my brother, the congressman, is that uh, Obote may not have signed that sentence at some point in time. But you know, at even all, the law at itself... All, at all. Even the law itself, the law is not static. The law is dynamic because there are emerging challenges in society. That's why time and again you have to keep tightening or adjusting laws. Equally, the penalty comes with it. Maybe the threat to lives at that time <laughs> was not... For example, if you came up at a point in time where people uh, uh, perpetuate, uh, say, group suicide, or common, uh, 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 suicide pact, for example. Mm. You say, oh my God, we didn't have suicide pact at this time. But now it comes. So the law itself is dynamic, and therefore the penalty is dynamic. So you approach and handle the challenge that it is. Okay? So that's why you would find that President X didn't sign, but President Y is signing. It depends on the challenges at that time. The society is dynamic. The society is not static. It is reflected in the dynamicity of the law on its prohibitions and penalty there too. I'm, so, I'm, don't I'm, be surprised I'm, 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 I'm that President X sure. signs and President Y doesn't sign. Just respectfully, just, just respectfully for just 30 seconds. I'm actually extremely, extremely su surprised. Um, the, the cases under which Milton Obote would have done so would have gone through the court processes. We had incidents in the 60s that are really not incomparable to whatever's happening about now, number one. Number two, it's extraordinary that in the 80s, when Museveni was actually in the bush, as really, de facto, everything is terrorist in Luero, and actually bombing Kampala, you know, but it didn't sign one single death penalty. Mm -hmm. Now, if it couldn't happen in the 80s, what is it really, after Museveni overwhelmingly was elected the last several months, mm -hmm. that requires a situation now, where somebody should be again, gunned no. down, actually even far worse, because extrajudicial killing is actually far worse than actually the, 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 the signing of a death penalty, which you, is actually you, legal. Congress, you now remind me of one, your own case. Mm. You actually brought a case that demonstrates my point. Mm -hmm. The case of Magara. Mm -hmm. I know Magara, I know the family, I know the daughter now. He's even a lawyer, he's my friend. I know the whole family. Say hi to Patricia. Right. Say hi to Yes, I, I know mean, Patricia yeah. is there. Now, uh, you brought in a case which actually fortifies my position or the position of government is that when you give terms of engagement, there are situations which lead to death. Your case of Magara being surrounded and refusing to surrender and leading to death. Your case actually supports my let, point. Let, then let's settle this. Your case supports my no, point. Let, let me help you settle this, actually, because uh, real PR is part of my job. Damien, mm. I think all really you want, and I think all really what Ugandans want, is this for this inner regime, perhaps Mr. Museveni, to spare some 30 minutes, come on the national television for the first time in a very long time and listen. Simply say that, look, I know Ugandans are very concerned about extrajudicial killings, very concerned about people who've been killed contrary to the law, and maybe at least I can enumerate three, four, five of them like this. These are the circumstances. But particularly the ones that uh, this was being referred more recently by the Lukwagos, I'll keep coming back to that. These other ones that we had part of discussing. This is what happened. There was a security operation. This is what happened. This is what happened. Let me let me certainly come to the national television and do that. Which no, usually, by no, the way, so usually, usually, usually actually, interestingly, uh, the police, the mm. police, if this was really a civil state, Actually, the inspector general police would have been the one to come out and explain to the state. The this is the operation that happened. It went like this. It possibly went wrong. It was, that's really all for me, which I'm a very sensible Uganda. This country, this is our country, my only country. This is all we want for our children, grandchildren. You know, this is really what happened. 
and we are very sorry, and this is what happened. Uh, and Uganda Mr. gets yeah. satisfied. My really brother right. from the Congress has mm. not helped me. You promised to help me. Yes. <laughs> but you are not. <laughs> to do PR. No, 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 in the process they kill, are you saying your army was doing extrajudicial killing? Absolutely not. I just said the second then why do you say this? Your case actually fortifies my position. You're now trying to simplify it. Even if, <laughs> am I speaking mm. French? Mm. I am saying you brought in your case <laughs> that a duly good army by the Congress people went to arrest Musebe somebody is, actually, Musebe, that ended up killing. That was, so for, what the, are for, you for saying? the record. You, you are in other words confessing that even when terms of terms of engagement are clear, people get killed. No, we are this is what you are saying. No, no, we are talking about the exception. I actually like you. No, we, we, are, we are very kind. <laughs> and let, let me bring it. We are just talking about the exception. Monica, yes, really, not I the don't rules. Don't. We are just talking about the exception, not the yes, rules. But, but just for the record, one second, UNLA was an yes. army founded by Mr. Museveni as his deputy commander. He just actually abandoned it and went to the bush. Maybe perhaps we should get some very good lawyers and make sure that we sue him for abandoning. Uh, no, 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 thank you very much. Honorable Monica, now he has talked about rules of engagement and, of course, and uh, terms of engagement. He has talked about that, and uh, quite clearly, one would want to understand: Are there is there where which are there circumstances where the security agencies can be uh, brought to book? Which are those? Where, of course, we know that there are rules of engagement. Well, what he raises, of course, mm. is a very important uh, issue: rules of engagement. Mm. I'm not an expert in security matters. Mm. He is, but uh, what we know is that. Um, there has to be a lot of caution, extreme caution, mm. because it has to deal with life. Mm. And certainly, every security organ has its, you know, uh, derives its mandate from a certain law. Mm. Certainly, the security, uh, or, or, you know, this particular arm of security, the UPDF, has its guiding principles mm. embedded in the UPDF Act. But in such kind of, the rules of engagement are not detailed. Mm. Each operation, of course, comes with its own, I think, rules of engagement, like he enumerated. So but in, in violation, how can they be held accountable? They are supposed to be held accountable. Certainly, if you get a good human rights lawyer on this, can mm. take government to court in terms of uh, um, failure to, to, to follow the due process of the law. Mm. Because in this instance, even if someone is a suspect, a suspected terrorist, mm. they are, because I made an argument earlier that if government or the state let's say the security state, a security agency, was able to find sufficient evidence to connect to this, you know, suspected terrorist and even follow them to their particular homes mm. and effect the killing there. It meant that they had the ability, that intelligence was sufficient to make arrests and also prevent the attacks which happened. Mm. And if that was excessive, then the law can take its course because the due process of the law is supposed to be investigation, arrest, and then arraignment before court. And then, you know, somebody goes through the what uh, is, is provided for under the law. But uh, uh, Ndugu, uh, which talks about rules of engagement, what we read here is the lack of clarity, like Honor, uh, Joseph noted, the lack of uh, clarity from the state. I don't quite hear from the security organs the rules of engagement being told to the public that this is what happened. It is rarely explained. All we hear, we have arrested 81 suspects. We put out of action a certain number. So far, I think there are more than 20 uh, since uh, Katumba's uh, shooting. And uh, uh, the, the, the detail is controlled by the intelligence uh, offices and, you know, uh, organs. Intelligence in the country is a monopoly of the you know, they inform you on what they want you to know. So the public only gets to know how many have been put out of action, but you are not at the scene of crime where the, the, the exchange happened. So as the public, you hardly get to know what happens there. But what is important to note is that the state is supposed to protect mm. the life of everybody. It doesn't matter whether someone has committed a crime of which nature. At that point, the state protects and then arrests 
and penalizes according to the law. Mm -hmm. But the extrajudicial killings that we continually see is impunity also from the state, and it should not be encouraged. Mm -hmm. I wanted to give information to Joseph that mm -hmm. I did a study around issues of peace building mm -hmm. 10 years ago, 205 or so. And the reading from the books and you know the literature that existed at that time seemed to indicate that the extrajudicial killings, killings done by the state under the pretext of the law, at that time, in comparison to Amin's time, I don't know how many years of Amin's uh, 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 leadership, about six, seven years but, or eight. But eight, eight and a half, yeah. 500,000 <coughs> lives were lost to the state at that time. But the argument made in the literature available seemed to indicate that at that time, in this current government, we had lost double more than that. That was 10 years ago. Now, before we even come to this 10 years now, how many more lives have been lost because of carelessness of the state, failure to act within the law, and you know, failure to follow the rules of engagement that our witch talks about here. So many lives have, lost, have been lost. And uh, that raises the question of the, the, you know, what Joseph raises, the need for, you know, you know just to, to talk about these issues. The violence that we have, if you combine the violence we have faced from 1986 through the terrorist organs, you know, LRA and others, there are about 14 or so, oh, you know, um, terrorist organizations documented. Allegedly. Alle no. Some, of, some of them allegedly. And for some the of document, them allegedly. Documented. Yeah. Alleged but we searched for mm. more than 14. Uh, documented or alleged? More mm. than 14. Right, if okay. you don't count these terrorist organizations right now, mm -hmm. it's a big number. Mm. And you count the lives lost from mm. those wars, mm. terrorist organizations mm. up to now, 35 years. You can imagine, I think the numbers will go to millions of people lost. And therefore, that situation is not good. It doesn't look good on any government. No government should have such a record of violence and terror. Interesting. In just, just, yes, I want to bring in the Honorable. Honorable yeah. uh, uh, Jirad, <coughs> you, for, now we have uh, relatives that these people, of course, have relatives. So one would ask, mm. are there any remedies or costs that uh, they could really get from our government in this case? Well, <coughs> remedies for abuse of uh, due process That's what I would, love to um, would, would, would basically be obtained uh, in the arena of, 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 of justice if, for instance, our institutions were respected. Mm. So if you have um, a functional <clears throat> judiciary, then you would say um, whoever uh, did or uh, was involved uh, in an extrajudicial killing, <coughs> brought book, and then um, the probably the, the the judge would would spell out uh, uh, how the families should be compensated. But before that, you know, um, when we talk about uh, this regime being involved in extrajudicial killings, we don't have to go very far. There are some very evident cases. Just think about what we went through last year during elections. Mm. Mm. In their broad light, 2 p.m., mm. 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 young men acting on behalf of the state, mm. carrying guns and shooting whoever was passing. Unarmed. Shooting at unarmed and civilians. Women civilians. who were basically selling fruits by the roadside. It was not a war even. Just, it was just one of those simple demonstrations. Actually, it wasn't anyhow close to the demonstrations we've seen, mm. probably with FDC before. Mm. It was just one of, and lives were just lost. So, so when we talk about these current or recent extrajudicial killings, it's not in isolation. No, mm. it's basically the character of the regime. Very repressive, very brutal. And, and, and you see, some of these things we talk about them and we seem to say, um, yeah, yeah, the energy regime maybe that would come in for its survival. You know, um, people, people, we, we tend to think these things are, are not very critical. You know, uh, uh, if uh, I think in director I wish, I think there are those moments where you, even when you're serving an organization, like, uh, like, like, NRM. like NRM, oh, uh, oh. I don't know why they call it zero. Where did that um, time go? <laughs> um, uh, I, you, there are those moments you, you also need to pause and say, I think um, 
this is this is really? one of those, really this is, this is one of those those key positions mm -hmm. uh, uh, where we need to go back and um, and get to, to 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 our own boardroom mm -hmm. and say there is some, something fundamentally uh, wrong. Yeah, not question going our well. conscience. Yes. You know, uh, it is said there is a there was a, a, a convict. Um, so this man uh, had the habit of marrying widows. So he would marry a very rich widow, and then he kills her in a very, <coughs> very, very uh, exceedingly undetectable ways. And then takes all the property, and then marries another, and takes all the property, and then kills that one, until on the third occasion, Give me a pattern. The, the, the police decided to arrest him and take him to court. But the question was, there wasn't evidence. They couldn't uh, say you killed this person with a gun or you suffocated. There, there was nothing. So this is what the judge said in the ruling. He said, in the first case, it was a tragedy. You lost your wife and we sympathize. In the second case, it was still a tragedy. Coincidental but perhaps. we mm -hmm. suspect you. <coughs> but, but in the third case, whereas it is still a tragedy, surely you are actually a murderer. Because there was so much of corroborative evidence because the pattern was somehow Same. similar. So even in these matters, it, it may appear as if, you know, it all looks like Waba. These people, they, they just, you know, they have to do these things in the, in the defense of the nation. Mm -hmm. But my friend, the only, the only way you are allowed legally to take a life is through due process. Mm -hmm. The other one is in self-defense. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Now, but think about this again. I don't know, there is a, there is a story that was, has been making rounds on social media. This particular individual uh, apparently receives 450 million on his account mm -hmm. from people he didn't know about. They pretend they wanted to buy property from him. So later they come back and say, look, we are sorry, uh, um, we can't raise the balance, so, but we know we have inconvenienced you and probably you've also paid agents. So, uh, so give us back the 400 million. So they go to the bank, he picks money and gives it to them and he retains the 50 because probably part of it he had already paid the brokers. But he's also maybe thinking, I've not made a loss, maybe I've made some little money for it, for not, even not having passed on my property or his property. <laughs> that is strange. So now, anyone can receive money here today and then, you know. Yeah. So, so what, what happens? Little did he know that these fellows had used him and his account in this particular case as a process for obtaining ransom. So these fellows had captured someone, put him in a place, and all they did was, until you give us this money, we are not going to release this fellow. So then they tell them the account of this investor in real estate. So the money is put on that account, and these fellows come and pick 400 million. And then the state now comes in and goes mm. for this individual. <coughs> now you imagine they where they just immediately enter in and literally kill, mm -hmm. because he could have been a terror suspect. Mm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So how useful would he have been to the very root, to the very individuals, mm. the very circumstances that where all this could be going. Mm. So it is very, very important. But even these 15 who have been shot at, maybe one day evidence will come and, you know, yeah. it will point so, to their innocence. Yes, yes. So it is support. very, very important. Yes. Uh, and, and it's not, uh, you know, sometimes we tend to think that somehow uh, these things are, are just put there. The, the, the establishment of, of a legal framework, and uh, again, the director which is a lawyer, so... Is, 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 is to make sure that humanity thrives in harmony. 
So, so the moment you, you, you begin becoming the law, the state becoming the law, the, then you take away, you were talking about elections. Come on, if, if, if no one believes or trusts the, the institutions, mm. or, be, if, or, or we all believe that now that the NRM only wins an election it has prepared, yeah? So, so then what confidence, what trust do you live with the people? And how do you relate with them as a state? Interesting. I, yeah. I think we need to just uh, break off. I, I, I'll, I'll bring Can I in. say something uh, before breaking off? Because we have eaten into the time of break, we will start with that. Joseph had also something to say. So I'll give you the opportunity to, to start on that as soon as we, we get mm -hmm. back from the break. So uh, to our viewers out there, of course, the conversation is still ongoing. And of course, we are powered by Inspire Africa Coffee. And that's why we see the conversation here is uh, quite energetic. And of course, uh, there's uh, quite a lot of our tempers here and there. But also, thank you for following this conversation. We're on Chat Show UG on the hashtag on Twitter, but also live on our YouTube channel, Civic Space TV. We are streaming live. Facebook, we are running live. Kindly be part of the conversation. Drop in your comments there. Drop, be part of this conversation. Let's see how we can forge a way and the future for, for, for our country. Just let's get back from this short break. There's a lot to discuss around this area and for us to learn. Thank you. Welcome back from that short break. And of course, it was a, a first session and the first part of uh, our conversation that had full of energy. And we are back, of course, uh, to have uh, the other second uh, segment of it. And of course, on the panel, I've had, uh, I'm having uh, Gerard. Uh, Gerard, of course, you're always welcome. Then I have uh, Joseph, mm -hmm. uh, a witch, and uh, Monica, who are, who are trying to help us understand the situation that is happening in the country. And of course, Right into the discussion, uh, my, my, my people, and uh, of course I had uh, Joseph, you mm -hmm. had something that you needed, to, and some information to give from uh, what I think uh, Monica had said, it, or Gerard. No, I think so it was, it, it was yes. Monica, it, but it was just a, a flaw into my, my next night, but I think it was just writing there, but no. Um, I think I simply wanted to say this, uh, and maybe as, as a free, free advice to, to this regime, that uh, in normal democracies actually, and what really needs to happen in this country, and, and I hope there is actually an investigation about this. But anyway, we don't. Who, who, who's the legislator here? General and Monica, you, you've got uh, many friends there. Um, maybe some legislators should take this up and uh, we take it seriously so that we do what UPC would like to do, and that is to ensure that we set up a, a, a formal police complaints commission. Now, the police complaints commission would be this, that at any moment when any member of the security services discharges firearms, this charges a firearm. It is formally investigated. That's the Uganda I want for Uganda Post Congress going forward. One. Number two, in the very sadly and unlikely event that anybody is killed by the security services, there is a formal investigation by the Police Complaints Commission. Usually, unfortunately, in democracies, the police anyway. But it's even actually worse that it involves the, the army. In but this in this instance, was it not the army? Uh, and they're taking the... It, indeed, and I'm saying so very interesting. It's, it's, it's good you bring that because it was going to bring me to something else. That really, terror suspects, you know, crimes. Who should be investigating? Uh, One. Number two, who should be carrying out the arrests? Mm -hmm, the arrests. Mm -hmm. You know, in most democracies, I, uh, this NRA took me to exile in Britain and I spent time in Britain for which the police usually don't carry firearms. The guys who carry firearms are very specific, and those with firearms are very restricted, just like it was in the first UPC administration, and to be in a UPC administration in the future. But I'm saying this because <laughs> of the context of what we're discussing. Yes, because of what we're actually discussing here. That perhaps is something worth considering, that even in the event that the, the, the army carries out the arrest, which is in itself a problem, that actually the army should not be carrying out arrests <laughs> of suspects. That's the job of the police. And again, I said in, in this conversation, in, 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 on this very same part of some time ago, that these are some of the issues that uh, maybe should have gone through to the DPP, but maybe it's too soon for terror can understand that there may be no time to process that. That suspects before actually police goes to arrest anybody, you know, a, 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 a preliminary investigation should have taken place. So really, these kind of things actually don't happen. But in the event that they actually do happen, that there's a formal investigation, 
investigations take place, even if it were the case, that probably from an eyewitness point of view, maybe the security forces are on the right. What do you want to do? You want to settle the minds, hearts and minds of the citizens that the security forces are responsible. You want to give confidence you know, to the state that this is a state which is here not only to protect us and our lives, but a state that respects and a state that rules and governs you know, through and by the, the, the rule of law. Interesting. I, I, I need to bring in uh, uh, <coughs> uh, I would, Before you react uh, or respond to what we've said, I also need to ask you, we, we, our budget really, uh, security really is the biggest share, the lion's share. Mm -hmm. And uh, at this point, well, it's when we would expect that there should be a lot invested in, in uh, investigation value and to value. ensure that at least there's value for money, to ensure that we, as the people, are highly protected. But we see there are these loopholes. Much of, of what is spent and given into, into these uh, budgets, we see, I think, the, the biggest funding goes when they, they are political, trying to curb political uh, activities and what. But then you're not seeing much into investigation that would really, really benefit and be of help to the people. What's oh, your <clears throat> Let me go straight to your point of uh, budget. Indeed, big budget goes to defense or security agencies for that case. And that is why maybe you often hear the president making pronouncement that we shall get them. And of course, that is why you... <laughs> <laughs> yes, because we shall get the means. Uh. You have the software technology to detect crimes online, who is talking to who, monitor the, who, has, who is where. Okay? Wow. That's why they're always detected. That's part of the investment. And that's why you're saying they went for somebody here in Chengari, they went for some. It's not just from the blue. It is from investigations. So there's a lot of investment there. Uh, but of course, the, the suspects, so they, they're also sophisticated. Every time they get sophisticated by the day. So that also tends to challenge the investment that you have made. But true, the investment is there. And pretty, the state has the capacity. You can't walk away with it, I can assure you, that people will always be arrested for as long as you're within the jurisdiction. So that one is there. So that explained the investment. But sort of that, I just want to mention something in passing. When Honorable Jera, I think, said NRMO, and you guys yeah. were laughing, yeah. and you're calling it but zero. Yeah. It is not zero, it is O. <laughs> well, so what is it? Tell us more about that, actually. i give you my one minute. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I say this because, you know, this discussion should also be part of educating our people or giving yeah, information. Well, yeah, sure, yeah. NRMO, I happen to have been working at the then secretariat, headed by Dr. Kionga, after... Uh, Wapa Kabulu. So we are the one who drafted this current constitution which registered the NRMO. Uh, that was after the referendum when they said the then regime was that everybody was under NRM. Okay? A one party system. They said, okay, we are now going. The referendum said go multi party. No, when we defeated mm. you in court, so, it was not the referendum. When the UPC defeated you, go ahead. But as we court. held a referendum. You held a referendum to formalize it, but again, for the fact, we want it for the record. Yeah. Well, uh, well I, I did go into that, but we held a referendum. So yeah. when the referendum decided that we go multi party, uh, NRM then said, those who believe in NRM should register it. <clears throat> but then we were not comfortable with a party the way we know a party as a concept, you its see? belief, and all that. <laughs> so we said, and that's why we have continued with symbol of a bus. We said for us, we are NRM, organization. Mm -hmm. So the O there is organization. So you really do We were avoiding the concept oh, of a party. You see? Well, well, that, that, is organization. Why, <laughs> news. that is why. And it's a historical. That is why we, yeah. that is why we continue it? to yeah. use the symbol of a bus to mm -hmm. mean everybody said welcome. Everybody's welcome. So NRM, <laughs> it is National Resistance Movement Organization. Okay. I found out which NRM you signed the constitution. Did I see your name I, on it? I thought it was... No, uh, I was a taken call part. I was with your sister, Wuli, Wuli, Wuli mm. who is now a judge, and Zamzam. We are in the legal department. Mm. So we are the... Drafters. The drafters. So that is what explained NRMO, National Resistance Movement 
organizations. Organizations. You see, those <laughs> we're not comfortable with them. Whose organizations? You see, so Demin, you see, <laughs> that's what <laughs> I say. <laughs> <that> <laughs> <that's> <laughs> so thank you for that. This is a fantastic conversation. You see, you see, so NRA, NRM, the same thing continuing. They all, they, I wish you're saying it. It's a continuation of the same thing. And the commitment was that the army would enforce, the military wing would enforce. And it's no surprise, the politics. surprise. Yeah, we, we, are, we are here trying to... It's a continuation of the so, same so, so, thing. So it's an important point. It's yeah. a continuation of the same thing mm. in as far as we are saying. The conceivers of the idea of the liberation. Are still in the charge. The conceiver mm. who conceived and waged the liberation struggle still have the ideas. So you're really rebels going. from within, aren't you? So... So that is it. Now, yeah, that yeah, explains yeah. NRMO. Mm. But the other thing I wanted to say no. is that, uh, you know, we are watched the world over. And uh, sometimes Gerard offers a detailed explanation, like the case of somebody whose, um, uh, whose account money was wired. Mm. I just wish that the world is watching us. If you said, for example, Honorable Gerard is saying, young, energetic youth, woke up and started shooting in broad daylight. You see, when the world is watching us and we make such pronouncements, we need to really substantiate where was this shooting and how many people were shot. And how, because if the world is saying this and we're keeping quiet to it, we are actually bringing a bad image to our government. If you go to the detail of explaining how our account was wired, you should therefore say, either you are saying in a Tinder, uh, so-and-so was killed in broad daylight, but if we are led at that no, level and no, leave it, for, we are really, really giving, okay, for giving, your giving information. a big service to this country. <laughs> for your information, uh, wondering, but yeah, yes, for your information uh, this, this was basically, um, uh, 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 I said, uh, I started making rounds on social media. So I, I didn't qualify to say that I own the story or know even the details of it. Uh, if you listen to me properly, I said, look, there is a story making rounds. Uh, that there was, a, that, that there is actually an investor, uh, a real estate investor, that ended up in trouble uh, because of uh, 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 fellows who had uh, who passed that money. One is okay. Me, I'm no. talking of the one where about... people killed the the oh, the 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 in broad The November, the November, the November killing. That did not happen. No, 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 no. Mr. Wish, you live in this country, <laughs> actually, you live in Uganda? <laughs> what I'm you, saying is yeah, that when we make such claims, mm. you we don't must even need... substantiate it. Oh. Because the whole world is saying, seeing us saying we this, this has been, broad, this and has we been... have nothing to state clearly. Oh, what, what are I'm you talking saying, about? I'm just saying, much as you stated the detail of the other fraud, mm. why don't you say the detail of this one? Oh, so but, but, wait. Uh, mm. Even your own leader went around apparently compensating families, yes. acknowledging that actually this was granted killing. Mm. So, my friend, you you seem to you and you know this. You you know, but you know why the regime has been at for mm. some time. You mm. know, you know yourselves. So no, anyway, that does there not is not no which is also a documentary. Oh, There's a documentary on the BBC. That does not of a specific track that, does that not was followed. My my but view that at least when we make claims, we must be specific and clear to it because the world is seeing us. Mm. The other thing I wanted to say was, uh, mm, you had asked about uh, if somebody was killed, can mm. a family bring yeah. claims, claims for yes, compensation? Yes. Of course, as a general rule in law, if you feel <coughs> your right is violated, you're free to go to court. And you bring a claim against the, the, the alleged violator. And if the, the alleged violator will respond, I am sure there are many cases where Attorney General has compensated, okay? And if these officers were acting on behalf of Attorney General, you would know it. So, claims as a general... What about, what about the allegation that Mr. Museveni did uh, uh, arrange for compensation for certain families? In the, the November killings. In the November killings. Where there is no report up to today. Yeah. I, I, you see, I, I have no facts. Even you, you don't have the facts. No, no, no. You, we you, need to you do it. But what I'm saying, I, w I wanted to respond to you that a family which feels, <laughs> and I'm doing this out of judicial process, mm. that out of court procedures, mm. you can bring a claim as long as you, are, you feel your rights are violated. And it is the other party to respond. There are various ways of responding. Mm. Either the party will concede and say we are sorry, or the party will say we don't know. But procedures are there. So whoever feels his rights was violated, say if your parents were killed or your child, you have a right to do that. And the other party will mm -hmm. respond appropriately. Uh, there is this issue of whether or not it is the army which does this, or it is the police which does this. 
It's a constitutional provision and even a legal in other subsidiary laws that the army will always go to help the police when called in. Mm. Yes. So, it can happen in two situations. Either the army will always be called to help, like in case of riot. Mm. In case of riot, the police is the lead. The army just comes to supplement. But in the case of a terrorist situation, arrest, you may find that it's actually an, a military operation. Or if the police wanted to carry the arrest, it is within the ambit of the law to support the police. So I think that should come out clearly. So I just wanted to make those clarifications. Uh, that but, uh, is also so so is it within the law mm. for the police, in this case, to say, okay, you know, there's a, there are some terrorist suspects and then we carry out investigations quite clearly, or there are some at the other end of uh, Entebbe Road near, near towards State House, you, the army, you go and, and arrest and, them on our behalf? And arrest and kill, actually. And kill, you know, perhaps kill them on behalf, behalf Well, you, you, you mentioned investigation. I could put it this way, that these operations that you see are what is called intelligence-led. Intelligence-led meaning investigations have been carried out. There's intelligence reports. You're making our case, where. actually, yes. So these are intelligence-led kind of operations. So if they're they, carried out by the military. It, it, it depends <laughs> on each and every case. Mm. There are those which are carried out by military, and there are those where the police... Cause, because if the police knows I'm going to surround a terrorist, Definitely, the police will know this is a combat situation. They'll call the army. So we have to look at each and every case. It's a case-by-case case basis. So the army so backs up the police or the army does it? There are two people asking. What do you answer? <laughs> I'm here. Who Which was where you start with? No, it's gives accountability <laughs> at the end of the day? Because most of the times we see police that is coming through, the spokesperson, yet these are military-led uh, operations. We have three line ministries, three or four line ministries. We have the Minister of Internal Affairs. We have the Minister for Security. And we have the Minister for Defense. So, any of the three line ministries can. But in most cases, the accountability you are talking of, accountability to the people of Uganda. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the most rightful forum to accountability of the people is in Parliament. Because it's only Parliament where you have representatives of the people. It is only in Parliament where you have a General Assembly that all the 40 million cannot assemble in one place, and therefore the, the assembly is by through representatives. So the accountability is given in the rightful forum, which is a parliament, and any of these ministers politically can give it. So what happens with the media center <coughs> arrangements with the, with the police? The media police center can also be a minister mass. doing it, or on a delegated role. Mm. The media center, the minister, you have seen many ministers go to the media center to do the explanation, but you also have other spokespersons who are doing delegated work by the ministry. But Mr. Wishi, <laughs> is something we, 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 I think we must correct. Mm. And you say that um, there, there is a forum or a process of uh, obtaining justice and... Uh, compensation. Uh, and compensation. Mm. I think it, it's, it's, it's fair to Ugandans that um, we tell them the, the real truth and the facts. That uh, we have more of the form for most of these <coughs> processes than the substance. So, if you recall, almost on all these <coughs> incidents, on all these killings, if it was one or two or three, then we would say maybe they are still processing, or maybe there was an error. But it's a, a very clear culture and practice of the regime to never, ever release a report almost on any killing. Mm -hmm. Even in, in a case as, as, as ordinary, you'd think, let's say, uh, uh, Kajesi, uh, Joan, mm -hmm. Kagezi, mm -hmm. Kagezi. Mm -hmm. even that one, you'd, you'd think this is, this is a, it's a person who is a state prosecutor. Mm -hmm. So, you, nothing. So, so when you say that um, they, are, they, 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 are, they, are, they are processes, yeah, it's one thing to have uh, uh, so-called institutions or you know, even documented formats of, of doing things, but it's also another for really people yeah, to get access, 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 yes. actual access, yeah. justice. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought you talked of accountability mm -hmm. on the side that 
an operation is done by the state or the killing is done by the state and you are asking for the accountability. Yeah. But Honorable Gerard seems to be saying no, 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 the accountability. No, no. That's a different the, one. Yes. Yeah, so I, 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 I was, no, 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 I was just using that as an example. Thing. I was basically yeah. trying to say, yeah. and as I said, there are so many, all of, all of them, I just want the simplest of them, mm -hmm. but where you thought it would be obvious that the state would have the obligation and say, okay, this one at least says release a report and say this is what happened. Mm -hmm. But I think this is where the difficulty is, yeah. that uh, Awit himself tells Ugandans that there is Ministry for Security, there ministry is Ministry for Defence, and Ministry for so Internal Defense. Affairs. Yeah. And I suggest that this is a terrible mess which must be cleared. Um, the Ministry for Defence's job, defence, is national defence. Yeah? Cross border. Really cross border. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, soldiers should get engaged in internal meaning territory when really, really, really the police and other agencies really, as a last resort, mm. clearly. You know? But also read the constitution uh, about the army. The, 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 if it does not give provision for it to help. The police. No, no, I'm, no, I'm not. I, I, I'm, not I'm not. I'm not content with I'm that. I'm not sure it is white and black in the constitution. I think it's administrative. No, you it, see, it, the functions of the army is yeah. said uh, national defense, involvement in production, okay, like agriculture. Very dubious. Helping other operation, civil operation, wealth creation. Yeah. That is listed. Helping other civil organization. It is listed there. But clearly not. So a, know that production is there. Helping other civil organization like police is there. And the national but what we are discussing is not that. No, really. And then, of course, Minister no, of, just wanted and to Minister of Security. Honorable. Minister of Security should remember. really be a subset of, you know, defense and internal affairs in between. Clearly, how it's done is neither here nor there. But we cannot say that they have the lead responsibility. But when it comes to the broader issue, it's quite clearly a Ministry for Internal Affairs job. Led it's an by, internal by, matter. Yes, an internal matter and led by the police. And if there's anomalies are there, at which you are a director of the NRA Secretariat, Please take this as a draft that NRA needs to very urgently restructure and go into the NRA regime as a government to fundamentally very quickly on the behalf and in the interest of the citizens of this country to clear away one this anomaly and two looking forward as a country to ensure that Ministry of Internal Affairs is clearly designated. I am That's saying That's why we've seen Enanga speaking on behalf of these issues. We have not seen the UPDF. That's you, what you I was see asking. and and that is why, as, why this, so the more reason have... why if Enanga is speaking is it the case that the police say that we can't handle this arrest? Mm. You know, you must go you must go and go ahead and do that come and give us a report. No, as I understand it, the nearest would be a backup and you guys you boast about your military thing, you know, like as if you've got a magic kind of stuff. You know, there's no reason why senior police officers, trained police officers, cannot you know, firearms, that. cannot go do these other things. And maybe actually say backed, you know, openly by the, by the military, just in case there's a backup. Do it but like that. But we have also cases, we have cases where we've been told, including invasion of parliament, you know, where dubious guys whom the speaker cannot even tell. Turns out that actually these are people who even up to date, maybe which cannot tell us in this republic. There is something so fundamentally wrong about this country, you know, <laughs> that after 36 years, it's actually a shame anybody can seek to attempt to justify it. And for which, including within your own conscience, I think it's a rather difficult job, isn't it? Yeah, I need to bring well, in that. Uh, oh, when you're talking facts, yeah, Monica, it's difficult. We're, we're discussing uh, economics and, and around uh, these uh, terror threats. You know, we are just trying to recover from COVID, and mm. uh, now we're trying to see how the economy can, can really jumpstart. But now you have situations where you have the terror in there and uh, situations that would really threaten and uh, block off tourists from coming. How do we work around this? Of course, largely issues of insecurity do affect uh, issues of uh, the economy and uh, issues of budgeting. Uh, it is two-way two mm. because, of course, for, for any Ugandan, they would be very concerned about those wow. happenings and as you know uh we've just come out of covid every ugandan is looking forward to the reopening yeah. of the the economy mm. in january and then shortly before that happens there are these terrorist attacks and of course that is even worse for the international community that uh, brings in money here for us through tourism as you know that is our biggest uh income source yeah. in terms of the country and so it's it's a very sad state that is why it is a concern 
for any ordinary Ugandan because the situation is dire. The, the businesses have collapsed. The other day I had the minister providing, I think, 200 billion for, for businesses that collapsed during COVID. I even wonder if that money is really there mm. in the budget in terms of uh, uh, the actuals because sometimes there is promising and then they have to keep coming back with supplementaries. The money is not mm. there. Then I heard about 20 billion from the minister for yeah, schools, uh -huh. for reopening. Yeah, that's a good gesture from the state in terms of supporting the businesses which had collapsed. But by and large, the situation is dire. And of course, on the other hand, that is another opportunity the state will use to, to require for more spending mm. in terms of the, the challenges that we have right now in terms of recovery and all that. Uh, I think they've been learning from the Kenyan government recently because when the pre mm. Kenyan president oh. addresses the nation, he's Fantastic stuff. straight to the issues of the economy. Mm. While ours here will be rotating around issues of insecurity and I don't know what. And history of... And energy. the history of the, the Bachwezi and so many other things. So <laughs> I think, uh, well, that could be a good gesture. But now we wait That's for the cool. actuals to mm -hmm. happen because that is That's the cool. heartbeat mm -hmm. of any Ugandan who was affected by COVID looking forward post-COVID and of course post this uh, violence which has happened. It's very, very unfortunate and it is not good for the economy. It's not good. It's even worse for the families that are directly affected by these terrorist activities. And so we can only look forward, pray for our country, hope, again, it's all hope that, you know, January comes here and it is open. Because my worry also is that when the head of state is going to address the nation, it is always that there is some attack somewhere. <laughs> oh. I have noted that sequence, you know, mm. there is an attack and then they... They have to address the nation. That's why it gets annoyed. Yeah? And then, you know. An attack annoys the grand so, <laughs> That's why I said it's like a movie. We mm. are like in a movie theater of mm. some sort. And it's not good. Mm. And I want to challenge the president and his people. Really, this country deserves better. And uh, the, 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 what Gerald started with was in line with the, the issues. What are the issues? What are the underlying factors that usually mm. result to this kind of, uh, you know, alterations and conflict? And as a woman, that is a big concern for me. Because if Uganda mm. breaks down mm. right now, mm. I mean, it is the women who are impacted differently and, and, and variously. And children, and the, children yeah. the family. Mm. So it is important. We always note this, that you see these panels have become manual pa man, man we, we're panels. We're very sorry. Today, at least I am here. But I think the leadership spaces, women bring in a different mm. feminist leadership. Mm. You know, we are not violent by nature. No. And you have so many men. Your sister is a vice president. Who is, well, yeah, that is my sister, actually. We want more of women who can add value to this government. And actually, because women bring in a feminist type of leadership, we are not warmongers. We wouldn't want to see our country going up in flames for any reason, because we know the impact on the country and the family and, the, you know, the, the heart the of the nation. Yes. It's, 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 Interesting. Uh, Gerald, yeah. I, I want to invite, of course, you need to have a take on, uh, on, uh, on the economy, but also because our time is fast spent. I also need to, to just take you a little across border that uh, we are so much involved in countries. We're like in Somalia. We're trying to invest, to invest so much in Somalia. And we, we, to what value would that be? For, for us in Somalia, yet we need to really be focusing on our security internally here. Yeah, um, I, I am a, a very a keen Pan-Africanist. <laughs> and um, I believe that uh, any brother or sister uh, suffering anywhere, uh, probably, um, in fact, even in your own neighborhood, if you see fire uh, uh, in, in your neighbor's house and you just look the other way, um, chances are that uh, you only need to be lucky that it doesn't actually end up in your own quarters. Um, so intervening and helping out uh, for, for, the, for, for, for the greater stability of Africa is, is, is a greater calling. <clears throat> However, no, but Gerald, however, as you're still before, subbing, before, why isn't Damian asking about Ethiopia? Is it yes. far, far from us? And I'm coming and to it, actually. Yeah. 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 Because and I'm really. coming, actually. To it. Um, yeah. However, there is something also about our government that is, uh, that is highly questionable. Because if, if we are, I mean, 
you start in Congo, and then uh, before I you know it, you are in South Sudan, then before I you know it, you are in Central African Republic, and then uh, at Somalia. some point we thought there was actually maybe, well, even up to now, there are some issues with Rwanda, and then Somalia, and maybe soon it will be Ethiopia. Because mm. we haven't so, deployed, really. Yeah. And we also keep wondering, um, are we actually uh, peace builders <laughs> or we are warmongers? Um, and uh, has it become our habit that uh, for us we... Um, Violent in we, we, we are We are the ones who are very specialized. Firefighters yeah. outside. <laughs> um, mm. so, Minding your neighbor's business. You know? So I, I also think we, we need to question um, the very motive, uh, what motivates our government uh, to be involved in conflicts mm. across, across uh, the continent and maybe sometimes even beyond. Mm. So could it be maybe we, have, we act on behalf of the West? Mm. Are we used? Of course we are. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, and so some people actually keep claiming and, 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 and maybe it is something that probably we need to uh, really interrogate keenly whether uh, our regime doesn't uh, really operate for and on behalf of uh, 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 both London and Washington. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. But we uh, seem to be aligned to China more now. Ah, uh, 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 now uh, you see th this regime is very interesting. So when it comes political survival, um, then they, they know where <laughs> to where to relate. Then mm -hmm. when it comes to economic survival. Now the, the Chinese become friends, yeah? So, and um, if, oh, by the way, if, if this was done with um, the motivation of the greater good of, of, of mm. Ugandans mm. and Africans, um, because again, in, in everything we do, we need to keep questioning, why? Why do we mm. do these things? Mm -hmm. Yeah? But it appears the, the, the motivation here we saw what happened in Congo, for instance. Mm. People were just there to amass wealth. Mm. Yeah. And, so, in, and in debt to us. Yeah. $10 so so, so we, we, we really need to question these things. And now, in the case of Somalia, Somalia could actually be. Uh, uh, so it appears, uh, because again, it is said that ISIS is claiming uh, these, these attacks. So, so it appears, of course, our involvement also there could, could be partly. Uh, the reason why we are having issues uh, of terrorism. Um, so we have got to also, there is need, yes, to look out for our brothers, and, and that should be saluted. Mm. But there is also need to question the motivation, and that informs every decision. So, so for me, it appears that um, the regime sets out basically to look out for, for survival, for longevity in governance, mm -hmm. as opposed to the greater good of the African people. And, and, and that has a lot of dimensions, because it, it, it ultimately everything ends up about um, uh, the feelings and the aspirations of an individual, mm -hmm. as opposed to the aspirations of a people. <laughs> so, and these are a very, very interesting uh, discussion, because some of these things appear so so complicated so, that um, Ger Honorable Gerard, that people who, who, even afraid. who in this case now is the agent of the West? Because when Bobby Wine comes up to act, they say he's mm. the agent of the West. Mm. Now you are <laughs> putting a, a claim. Is the enemy from within here, or where, where is this enemy of Africa now? You know, you know one thing. One thing that uh, the, the, this regime has mastered. And, and uh, way back is propaganda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they really, you know, they used to Siasa. say, yes, yes, uh, they used to say, I remember when we were in primary, they used to say that uh, at some times, some seven becomes, at some, time, at some points, it becomes a cut. And some actually believe this. <laughs> so, so it appears. Is it true? <laughs> it appears. Come <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> so it appears that has always been about them. Uh, they always find a way of trying to, to pass it on and, and make it appear the other. But we all know, in practical terms, we know who relates very closely with the West. We know who is, who is facilitated by the West. So the, the regime certainly um, enjoys a lot, of, um, a lot of support, clearly, in every sense. 
by, by, by the West. And um, for us as Ugandans, we have every reason to keep questioning and interrogating what is happening to us. Because ultimately, this regime, surely after maybe they will make 40 years now, <laughs> he's, even when he said it sounds like so, and so ridiculous that they will make 40 years in power. So, mm. Yeah? Wow. I, I hope they don't end the fight ever. Sure, it's too long. <laughs> Even 36 alone is just too much. Mm. So, but let, let's hope that this eventually ends in a, 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 a rather peaceful transition. That this, that the, the terrorism and unfortunately coming in terms of, of, of the pandemic. Mm. Also, Honorable, as you're, 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 you're going on, I need to, maybe I'm going to give you an extra 30 seconds yes. to also make your final remarks because our time is first spent. Uh -huh. Then uh, on the possibly the way forward for yes. the stability of our country. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, the, the structures of governance demand that um, at any one time there is a government in power to run a country. Now, this comes with a very, very critical obligations. Not even just responsibilities, but obligations. Now, and the cardinal among all is, uh, like at the beginning, like we started, is the protection of the lives. Even before you think about the properties, the lives of the people. Mm. So, if, if this regime and for long it has survived on the thread that, uh, you know, we are here for peace and stability. We brought peace. And development. And some people say that, uh, <laughs> that they can maybe now sleep. That's the thread. <laughs> mm. Yeah? Now, it appears finally even this thread is, 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 is really falling apart. There's no sleeping? Yeah, that is it. <laughs> falling apart. <laughs> uh, actually, if you want to know about sleeping, then you need to ask the, the permanent secretary of Ministry of Finance. He will tell you why Ugandans are not sleeping. <laughs> Both the rich and the poor. I'm sure you've seen that. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> um, so, seriously, we really need to push our government in a very critical corner that they can go into this boardroom and say, wait a minute, how are we ending up here? Why are people really so, if it is true, these are suicide bombers, mm -hmm. that people have, they choose even to give up their lives for the sake of others and say, no, it is this bad. So we really need to do everything we can to ask these very difficult people to listen mm -hmm. because uh, their leader is to have way. We have to keep reminded. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so we need to really push them and say, look, go in and, 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 and interrogate yourselves and see whether you really want this country to perish or to flourish. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Honorable. Uh, and Ugo Cheno, you have 30 seconds um, the stability it, of the country. Indeed, and just to conclude that uh, two quick things. One is that uh, the economy of this country is um, quite dependent on tourism. Uh, so this terror thing is terrible. Number two, actually, the other one is the diaspora remittances, which is normally convenient for, for the witches, and when it's not convenient, they abuse them as those other guys, together with the with, with, with NGOs. Mm. And as, when, is when, the director for external, external affairs. affairs. Indeed, affairs. Indeed. So when, when in so reality, this like regime it. basically literally lives on uh, the, 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 the handings of Western government. So Dr. Bode called... Uh, Museveni, the Nyampala. So basically, officially, and people can go and research, there is no leader in this country's history or any of the East Africa region that can be described as an agent of Western imperialism as Museveni. No standing leader. Not even you were, not, not even Mobutu. Not even Mobutu. Not even Mobutu. No, not even no dead leader in this country. Not anybody within the East Africa region. So this regime has been the most perfect agent of Western imperialism than any other in East and Central Africa. That is official. Number two, you're quite right when you talk about this thing to do with China and other places. Museveni has been a perfect one. He plays like, um, I don't know to use the other, the other word, these guys who will dance to anybody kind of stuff. So India and China when it's convenient, you know, Southern Africa now these guys talk about ANC. These guys didn't actually support ANC, they supported the Pan-African, <laughs> the PSC <laughs> during the early times of our struggle. So 
Um, so the, the, the ANC was too progressive. You know, PSC was the radical guy. I wish you may not necessarily know that. So this Museveni would do Why? anything. Why? I'm very informed. You know, he would do, he would do anything <laughs> when it serves his interest. And you're quite right. What we talk about is a strategic national security. Now, a friend, a decent, beautiful colleague of mine, a friend of mine in the diaspora, told me that she fears coming home for Christmas or coming home at all because of the bombings. You know, it's very worrying. So, therefore, that um, our remittance is actually challenged and threatened. And actually, the spend, forget about even the tourists to come, but actually those other diaspora citizens to come and actually spend the extra beyond that amount of money that they're giving. So really going forward, it's very important that, um, um, uh, that um, we rally around our citizens of this country uh, on, on this very particular matter and plead to, to, to this regime to, 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 to humble themselves, have some sense of humility so that a language emerges at the helm which brings all of us together, particularly as we lead towards Christmas, so that there's a possibility for us to begin to walk the streets with confidence, mm -hmm. you know, mobilize resources, you know, from home and abroad with everyone else, and do the things that actually even people from around me almost would now fear. When you're going to Kampala, don't go to congested places. Mm -hmm. So when it begins that, the spend is really not about tourism. The spend is also even about domestic spending, meaning really uh, activating the domestic economy. It becomes very, very difficult amidst COVID. But, uh, you know, this country has survived. It's going to survive beyond NRM Museveni. And uh, uh, the future is possible. The future is the youth of this country. And uh, this is a country that UPC gave for God and my country. There's no reason that it cannot be a possibility beyond this regime and a possibility beyond terror from whichever side it is coming from. Mm. Interesting. Uh, yes, I start answer. with my brother, the congressman, doubting my ability to be informed, <laughs> <I'm sorry>. especially <laughs> the literature of South Africa. <laughs> First of all, I lived with South Africans in their struggle. In that, the South African child soldiers, Kadogos, were here, and when they came here, Museveni said, "No, uh, we are not going to allow you to go back. You will go back to school. You will go to school in Uganda." We were with them in entire school. And they went back. But briefly saying is that during the liberation struggle of South Africa, you had ANC and PAC. The PAC calling themselves the Azania. Mm. And ANC, from the time of Chief Lithuli, where in Bugolobi there's a road Lithuli, mm. ANC over time believed in a rainbow South Africa. And it is manifested in some songs like For Lucky Dube Together as One, where even it dances with some wise. At that time, the media law prohibited for to taking a, a appearing even in a TV talk show with a white, a black and white. But Dube did it in violation to show his protest. Meanwhile, the Azania believed push the blacks to the water. But the Lucky Dube and the NC said, no, this country is for all of us. So uh, we helped them. We as NRM. I know you, 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 follow, you, you, follow, you followed us. We, we, we set the foundation in the okay, 60s. Wait, you followed I, us. I know <laughs> you, you, you argued about them in uh, Singapore, and that is part of what the debate yeah. that had taken about anyway, and brought yes. in problem. Mm. And, but uh, the thing is, we took them to Kaweta, where many no, died. On behalf of this country, it. on behalf of this country, so yes. We lived with them, they came here, they were smuggled here by the, the president and the, the other president, uh, uh, who, this one who was taken to court, what is his name? Zuma. Zuma, Zuma. Zuma was the CMI, the Chief That's of correct. Military Intelligence mm. of, uh, of ANC. Mm -hmm. And he had 80,000 soldiers, invisible soldiers, so in soldiers that you wouldn't see. And he was the chief of military intelligence, despite the fact that he stopped in physics. was such a genius to coordinate all these rebels, smuggle them to Uganda, take them to Cuba, take them to Libya, take them to China, bring them back, yeah. smuggle them to South Africa to fight. That was purely an intelligence-led thing by, by good, that good. guy. Mm -hmm. Despite his limited education, he played such a big role to actually coordinate 80,000 invisible soldiers. So, uh, don't doubt me with any literature. Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't doubt me with any literature. But then I want to comment about yes. motives briefly. Uh, what forms these motives is really, uh, as Gerard said, Pan-Africanism. The situation in Somalia was not really like you have the incumbent in Ethiopia. It was a situation of anarchy and people are dying and breeding more unfavorable conditions. That's where we went there. And so these motives are really Pan-Africanist motive, which cannot be disputed. And then I like to say, I, in I, view of the time, I, I like to assure you, I I like to assure you that uh, the NRM that I grew up in is not... Is not the current NRM. No, it doesn't <laughs> do propaganda. 
And that uh, is even <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that is why William Five will if, disagree. Uh, yeah. if you observe President Museveni, yeah. for example, he has this habit when there's an issue to call in a district, say cow, come and explain. If there's an issue of agriculture, PS come and explain. This is the foundation of NRM NRA, which says let's be objective. If this is the matter, you tell us. <laughs> okay? This is the object. So propaganda is far fetched. <laughs> and the, the, the long years, uh, 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 30, 45 year, years. You see, uh, the I am, Congo I am sure one, one uh, part of a witch is not agreeing with us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I totally agree. Congress, <laughs> Congress here is saying, Congress here is saying, Congress is saying we have China, we have Americans, we know what to do. I mean, what is it that is if it doesn't form your competency to balance forces and move on. No, no, absolutely not. You did it, or uh, you, you Congress did it, mm -hmm. when you were with the Israelis and the UK, and you tried to move to the west, uh, move to the left, you didn't we, balance we, we it. We stuck to our principles. You so we, no, we should go more no, you're right. We, you, <laughs> we, should, we stuck to our principles, and we lost. And you lost. But, it. But it and means we should it. say thank you. Can we <laughs> lose it? If you are, fail... Uh, so for that reason, to go, so that yeah, you really don't belong. You just okay, go down and yeah, 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 yeah. Let me conclude yeah, by saying. Is, yeah. Yeah. Let me conclude by saying that uh, the 30, 40 years <laughs> is an intellect of balance. Of forces, <laughs> there you go. That you balance the forces and move on. You just don't say I'm moving to the left and tomorrow you are thrown by people. You could have balanced and stopped it, you know. and that led to the loss of life because when Amin took over, it was chaos. It was your negligence. So why don't you appreciate the person <laughs> who balances the West, balances China, and we move on? Is it a discredit or a credit? No, the lives, no. the livelihood that, of our people no. and the NC. <laughs> lastly, lastly, I would yes. like to say <laughs> is that terrorism is condemned internationally. Yeah. I like to call upon fellow citizens to address their grievances in the right forum. If there is election, participate, vote where you want. If you challenge election results, Please challenge it. <laughs> so let us be peaceful because achieving mm -hmm. an objective by terror method is condemned internationally. It is, it is non segregative, it, is, it hits everybody. It's not a good way. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you very much, Andrew Gawich. And to, to Monica, I want you to challenge <laughs> yeah, the, the men that yeah. you, can, you can use your, your, your 30 seconds well, very well and you finish in time. Mine is time. a simple one because mm. uh, in listening to uh, a fund, a witch. Of course, is uh, very interesting at the same time, mm. but uh, I know that he's in a very difficult position mm. Mm. sometimes mm. to explain some of the narrative. Mm. Being an NRM ideologue, something like that, and next to a UPC ideologue. Mm. Uh, the marriage is going. The on. marriage is going on very well, but the NRM team <laughs> the non sometimes Thank wants you. to <laughs> <laughs> to simplify the narrative and think that Ugandans who are watching mm -hmm. are just yeah. taking it in. And, uh, you know, taking in whatever narrative that they throw out to the public. And that is where, for me, I'm making that conclusion to challenge mm. Ugandans to, mm. to go beyond what is given in terms of the intelligence that is being given, in terms of the, 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 the narrative that comes from the spokespersons of the state. Sometimes this narrative, of course, as Ugandans, we are good people. We believe what the state says mm. as good citizens. Mm. Mm. But I think there is more that meets the eye in some of these uh, narratives that are um, taken out to the public. For example, the, the narrative of peace, you know, the country has enjoyed a surmountable amount of peace over these years, and NRM has scored well in that area. I think that um, <sighs> this is a time where we need to challenge it and question that, because there is literature that seems to suggest that uh, the level of violence that has happened in Uganda during these 30 or so years has been quite intense and extensive and unprecedented. Yes. And, unprecedented. And, and in fact, it is, uh, you know, totaled up. What has happened in this one regime is more doubled than what happened in the previous regimes. All, all put so, uh, with a way forward in, for in, the stability. And of course, in terms see. of that, that has impact, you know, implications mm. on the society mm. because the level of stress and, uh, you know, uh, the, the stress that people are undergoing, going through these notions and motions of life generally under such heightened levels of violence is, is, is not good. And it creates a certain 
type of people, a type of generation that we may not actually understand in the future. Because they grow up seeing violence everywhere and they live with the violence and, you know, and they, they don't even have avenues. These are the avenues Joe talked mm. about for discussing them, you know, the reconciliatory efforts. Just open conversation without feeling the repercussions of the state, having an open conversation. I think at this point in, in time, that's what we, we need as Ugandans. That's why we openly come here and talk, because it is also therapeutic mm. to, <laughs> to, yeah, yeah. to communicate and discuss these issues. That's what we need as a nation. Yeah. We need to have a conversation on some of these issues. Mm. Not in the interest of destroying, but building our country going forward. Because as it is, we have to give people hope. And we want to say there is hope. We, we, we have to keep engaging. Mm. Because where we have reached now, it, there is a possibility and even a risk of, you know, people losing hope mm. in the country. There is a, a study which has been done recently mm. indicating that Ugandans no longer love their country. And it is in line yeah. with the tourism, yeah. I think, ranking. Mm. And they were asking Ugandans the question of whether, uh, you know, they love their country or something. And I think the Tanzanians and the Kenyans came up first mm. in terms of loving their country at heart. And Ugandans love their country for foreigners to come in, but mm. they do not love their country themselves because of, you know, of course, the situation that is pertaining and, you know, the impact. So generally, if you ask an ordinary Ugandan whether they love what is going on right now in the country, I'm sure they will tell you. And they will tell you Uganda is this and the other because of what is happening. So we need a conversation. And finally, we, we need to question these narratives beyond what we are given mm. in such kind of fora. And I think the responsibilities on Ugandans to have their own, you know, conversation as you are challenging. And political them. leaders across the political divide, across including the, board, the political yeah. leaders. So yes, yes, I think that. that's very, very important. Mm. Uh, thank you very much, yeah. uh, Monica. Yeah. And uh, thank you very much, mm. uh, Andugua Awich. Uh, thank you very much, Joseph. And uh, also thank you very much, Remember uh, Gerard, for sparing your time to, to you. come and, uh, of course, inform our viewers here who are always there constantly watching, following these conversations. Also to our viewers out there, thank you very much for being part of these conversations. We always come here to inform, engage, but also educate you and give you the pointers for you to reflect upon uh, and also try to reflect to, on the, to the good of our country going forward. Thank you very much for being our, our ardent followers of this uh, chat show. But also thank you very much for your comments. Thank you very much for your feedback that we always work and rely on to, to, to change and also do good. But also this is where they use, you have an open conversation, like Monica said, and also that's where we also engage diplomatically uh, for the good of our country. Of course, this conversation is always live on our uh, Twitter handles uh, and also the hashtag ChatShowUG, but also on uh, uh, YouTube, uh, Civic Space TV, and Facebook, of course. That's where we are running and streaming live every Friday at 2 to 4 p.m. We are always here. Thank you very much for being good viewers and followers uh, for God and my country.